subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 15th of November. Indian Prime Minister Modi inaugurates world-class railway station, multiple initiatives to mark Tribal Pride Day. Islamic grouping OIC falling for Pakistan's false narrative on Kashmir blames activist. And Afghan Shiites call on Taliban to ensure security as attacks spike. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday inaugurated multiple initiatives including a world-class railway station in central Madhya Pradesh state to mark Tribal Pride Day. The Prime Minister also virtually inaugurated a grand museum dedicated to tribal culture and contribution to the freedom movement, marking the birth anniversary of tribal freedom fighter Birsa Munda. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated a world-class railway station, flagged off two trains and launched multiple initiatives in Bhopal city of central Madhya Pradesh state to mark the Tribal Pride Day on Monday. The redeveloped Rani Kamlapati railway station, named after brave and fearless tribal queen Kamlapati, is the first world-class railway station in Madhya Pradesh designed as a green building with modern amenities. It is slated to be a hub for integrated multimodal transport. The PM said railway infrastructure projects which took years to get off the drawing board are now being done on time. City yahan tak pahunch gayi thi ki logon ne sthitiyon ke badalne ki ummeed tak chhod di thi. Log maan liya chalo bhai aise hi guzara karo sab aise hi chalne wala hai. Lekin jab desh ईमानदारी से संकल्पों की सिद्धि के लिए जुड़ता है तो सुधार आता ही आता है Earlier in the day the prime minister took part in the celebrations of the birth anniversary of tribal icon and freedom fighter Birsa Munda which is marked as Tribal Pride Day and launched various welfare schemes for tribals in Madhya Pradesh He also virtually inaugurated the first of 10 museums in Jharkhand state dedicated to tribal culture and contribution to Indian freedom movement. And amid the worsening situation of pollution in New Delhi, India's Supreme Court on Monday asked the central government and authorities in the national capital region to address major causes of air pollution and submit an action plan by Wednesday morning. The air quality in the city has remained under the very poor post Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights, which usually sees the bursting of firecrackers. <laughs> India Supreme Court on Monday asked the central government and the authorities in the national capital region to address the chief causes of air pollution as it directed to impose work from home and sought urgent steps to rein in crop waste fires in neighboring states. Its action came after city authorities in New Delhi which has been battling a toxic haze since early November took emergency measures on Saturday ordering the closure of schools and building work for 4 days Delhi ke andar jo pradushan ki samasya Diwali ke baad badhi hai pichle 10 dinon se pradushan ki sthiti mein kafi parivartan hua hai aur isliye Delhi sarkar apne astar pe jo jo prayas hai wo kar rahi hai और उसको लेकर के जैसे अभी आज से दिल्ली के अंदर सभी स्कूल कॉलेज संस्थान बंद कर दिए गए हैं दिल्ली के अंदर सभी कंस्ट्रक्शन कार्य जो हैं वो सारे बंद कर दिए गए हैं दिल्ली के अंदर सरकारी दफ्तर में जो कर्मचारी अधिकारी हैं वो वर्क फ्रॉम होम कर दिए गए हैं द ओवरऑल एयर क्वालिटी इंडेक्स ऑन मंडे स्टूड एट थ्री ऑन अ स्केल ऑफ फाइव इंडिकेटिंग वेरी पोअर कंडीशन अकॉर्डिंग टू फोरकास्टिंग बॉडी सफर Residents complained of breathlessness and irritation in the eyes due to the pollution. 
अब आजकल तो हर एक को इतना ज़्यादा ब्रीदिंग प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है आंखों में जलन होने लगती है बाहर निकलते हैं तो ऐसा लगता है बाहर ना निकलें लेकिन घर में बैठ के भी सफोकेशन होती है तो बाहर निकलना भी ज़रूरी है थोड़ा फिजिकल होना ही चाहिए तो बहुत बार तो हम आते हैं वापस चले जाते हैं इतना लगता है हर जगह धुआं धुआं फैला हुआ है कितना भी मास्क लगा लें लेकिन आंखों में तो जलन होती ही है द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑन मंडे ऑल्सो ऑर्डर मेजर्स टू होल्ड वेहीकल ट्रैफिक दैट इज नॉट इसल कट इंडस्ट्रियल पोल्यूशन एंड लिमिट डस्ट Kashmiri political activist Dr Amjad Ayub Mirza has blamed OIC the organization of Islamic cooperation of stoking up the Kashmir issue to advance the Pakistani narrative after its delegation visited Pakistan administered Kashmir recently Mirza said the OIC completely ignored the fact that there were multiple anti Pakistan protests being held at the same time in the illegally occupied region Dr Amjad Ayub Mirza a Kashmiri political activist has lambasted the recent visit of a delegation of OIC the Organization of Islamic Cooperation to Pakistan administered Kashmir alleging that the group was talking up the Kashmir issue at the behest of Islamabad to advance the Pakistani narrative Mirza said the OIC delegation parroted Islamabad's position in the region while ignoring the fact that there were multiple anti-Pakistan protests being held at the same time in the illegally occupied region he posed a number of uncomfortable questions to OIC as he raised concern over ongoing human rights violations and the exploitation of natural resources of Pakistan administered Kashmir by the Pakistani establishment did you not see the misery of my people did you not see how we are, we have been chained in the shackles of an interim constitution prepared made and imposed by pakistan on us that deprives us that deprives deprives us of the freedom to choose and forces us to sign a document of uh accession to pakistan probably not Pakistan holds considerable sway in OIC thanks to its recently formed alliance with Turkey and it has now turned to the Islamic grouping after failing to muster international support on its Kashmir position on the basis of repeated perpetuation of lies meanwhile India's foreign ministry has also criticized the OIC delegation's visit and described it as an interference in India's internal matter maintaining that the region is its integral part And moving on members of Baloch community observed Baloch Martyrs Day in Paris recently where they also held a protest highlighting atrocities on its people by Pakistani establishment holding Baloch flags and placards that read stop enforced disappearance in Balochistan and stop execution of Baloch people the demonstration was organized by the Baloch Republican Party On November 13th every year Baloch Martyrs Day is observed to remember those Baloch activists who sacrificed their lives for the freedom of Balochistan. While thousands of Balochs have been abducted and disappeared since its illegal occupation, hundreds of others have been eliminated in the line of Pakistan's kill and dump policy, activists say. Thousands still remain unaccounted for. Balochistan is a resource-rich but least developed province under Pakistan's illegal occupation. Many Balochs believe that the region was independent before 1947. While successive governments have promised to criminalize and force disappearance, none has taken concrete steps and the practice continues with impunity and a news from afghanistan the rising targeted attacks by the islamic state on the minority shiite sect in afghanistan have caused panic among the residents in afghanistan who have asked the government to ensure security and safety relatives and friends on sunday gathered to bury their loved ones a day after a magnetic bomb attached to a passenger minivan exploded in a heavenly shiite area of afghan capital kabul causing an unknown number of casualties Afghan residents and eyewitnesses have asked the government to ensure security in Afghanistan after a magnetic bomb attached to a passenger minivan exploded and killed and wounded several people over the weekend. The blast happened in a heavily Shiite area of the Afghan capital Kabul on Saturday, 
and caused panic among the Shiite residents who suffered a lot of attacks by Islamic State in recent years. The area is heavily populated by Shiite ethnic Hazaras who have been the target of repeated attacks by Islamic State militants. Afghanistan to hanuz ham dochor mushkil has va niyoz shadid ba ta'min amniyat dara bil akhira va ye yek az masuliyat ha va mukallafiyat hai asosi hukumat has va har kasi ke dar ras qarar megira chi imarat islami basha chi yek nizam dige basha bil akhira ta'min amniyat yek az masuliyat hai asosi has ke bar shaharwandan amniyat komil va jamir ba ta'min bukuna Islamic State claimed responsibility for Saturday's attack, the group said on its Telegram account on Sunday. Relatives and friends on Sunday gathered to bury their loved ones a day after the blast. More than 100 people were killed in attacks on Shiite mosque in the northern city of Kunduz and the southern city of Kandahar last month. Both attacks were claimed by Islamic State. <laughs> از مسافرین و کارگران شهید شدند و تعداد هم زخمی شدند. The recent spate of such attacks has heaped more pressure on the Taliban rulers who took power following the collapse of the western backed government in August and are also grappling with the economic crisis and potential famine. In news from Bangladesh, Bangladesh's foreign minister Abdul Momin has said the recent climate change conference COP26 could have accomplished more, but it did not. The UN climate talks ended with a deal that urges rich countries to increase funding for poor countries by 2025 to help them tackle climate change effects, but offers no guarantees. Momen said he hopes better days for Bangladesh. Bangladeshi Foreign Minister Abdul Momen on Sunday said the recent climate change conference COP26 could have accomplished more, but it did not, as he addressed reporters after returning to Dhaka from the summit in Glasgow. The UN climate talks concluded with a deal that for the first time targeted fossil fuels as the key driver of global warming. It urges rich countries like the United States to increase funding for poor countries, including Bangladesh, to around 40 billion US dollars annually by 2025 to help them adapt to mounting floods, droughts and other effects of climate change. While the agreement won applause for keeping alive the hope of capping global warming at 1.5 degrees Celsius, many of the nearly 200 national delegations wished they had come away with more. We had a high ambition and expectation of COP26. And my feeling is the COP26 can accomplish more. Unfortunately, you see, uh, it didn't do happen. So uh, we look forward to better days. Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina had earlier at the conference told rich world leaders that they must fulfill both their own carbon emission, cutting pledges and keep their promises to help developing countries decarbonize. The Glasgow Climate Pact offered a promise to double adaptation finance by 2025 from 2019, but again, no guarantee. And on the auspicious occasion of Devutani Kadashi, Hindu devotees across northern India took holy dips in revered river bodies on Monday morning and offered prayers. According to Hindu beliefs, deities go to sleep for four months of rainy season and wake up on this day. Hindu devotees across northern India took holy dips in revered river bodies on Monday morning on the auspicious occasion of Dev Uthani Ekadashi. Dev Uthani translates to waking up a god and Ekadashi translates to the 11th day, which is when Hindu god Lord Vishnu is awakened. According to Hindu beliefs, deities go to sleep for four months of rainy season and wake up on Dev Uthani Ekadashi. Devotees in northern Uttar Pradesh Prayag Raj took holy dips in river and performed the wedding of holy basil plant Tulsi and her husband Shaligram. Today is a very important day of Kadashi. Today Tulsi and Shaligram are married. Today we are the Hindu society of the Hindu society. As it is in our own way, we are growing up with 100 and 100 and we are Devotees were also seen taking holy dip in river Ganga at Varanasi city on the auspicious occasion. During this period, all the auspicious events are banned and this day marks the beginning of wedding season among Hindu and Jain communities. 
Devotees also pray for healthy and happy married life on this day. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.